guests. And all right, let's bring back retired Navy Captain William Toady, who joined us at the bottom of the hour. Uh, Captain, thank you so much for sticking around here. Uh, first, I know you listened to the press conference. Uh, you were a retired Navy Captain. What was your biggest takeaway from what we heard today? My biggest takeaway was that what we worried had happened um, actually did happen. And so sometimes in life, you think that you're right, but you hope that you're wrong. This was one of those instances. When all communication with the submersible was lost on Sunday, that's that was the most likely event that would cause the kind of symptoms we were told had happened. Uh, now, the good news about that is, is it, it means that they didn't freeze to death from hypothermia, they didn't asphyxiate from lack of oxygen, they didn't drown from a slow flooding event in the submersible. They were killed instantly. And, you know, if you could take any comfort from that, you know, that's the best we can hope for at this point. But there's a, still a lot to learn about the mechanism of failure, the, the prevention uh, that could have been put into place, the, the inspection regimes and things like that to make sure this never happens again. Absolutely. Uh, and again, all indications right now, although we do not know for sure, but all indications that it did happen uh, when the, the crew lost contact, as you said, less than two hours into it, because the alternative certainly uh, seemed like an unimaginable torture chamber, truly. Uh, Captain, question for you. Will we know, because there doesn't appear, you know, this is not a, a plane. There is no black box uh, on this type of vessel. Will we know, you know, the how, the why, the exact when uh, this event occurred? I believe we will, but it's going to take some time. Materials science is sophisticated enough. That you could take a piece of titanium, a piece of carbon fiber, and determine what the mechanism of failure was, whether it was a defect, whether it was a weld problem, whether it was a, some other kind of of, of intangible um, that would cause the catastrophic instantaneous failure. But it's gonna require some materials analysis. It's gonna require recovery of the debris. And so that, that will take, in my estimation, a, a period of months um, before people understand what happened to, to everybody's satisfaction. And Captain, how is that recovery going to happen? Because again, this is happening two miles underwater, which further complicates the recovery. It's, it's gonna be slow and tedious and remotely operated vehicles that can operate this deep. There aren't many of them in the world, but some of them do have kind of grappling hooks and baskets and they could pick up one piece at a time, put it in the basket, bring as many as they can, bring it up. Larger pieces can be lifted with a winch system that the Navy has already declared that they're going to deploy, or already in the process of deploying. But that again also takes time. That could take weeks to pick up the larger pieces and even more months to pick up the smaller pieces so they can reconstruct the vessel to understand exactly what happened. You know, Captain, uh, last hour I spoke with uh, retired Captain uh, Curdian about what the banging noises that were reported Tuesday night into early Wednesday morning, there were some type of sounds that were picked up, sounded like some type of banging or clanging. Any idea what those could have been? As a submariner, and I've spent years of my life underwater, the ocean is a very noisy place. You hear banging, clanging, you hear explosions caused by hydrographic surveys, um, oil gas surveys, things like that. And so none of those sounds gave me any confidence that they were um, caused by these individuals. Because when you're a human being waiting to be rescued, you make a very kind of uh, discern, uh, concerted effort to make sure you're understood. So the sounds you would produce are going to be unmistakably somebody looking to be rescued, SOSs and things like that. They're not going to be random clanging sounds. Um, so I never gave, had much confidence that those were had anything to do with the Titan. All right, and Captain, I want to go back to, to the recovery as we talked about. If we can bring up uh, the shot of the inside Ocean Gate's Titan sub there, the big picture for all of us to take a look at. As we look at what is uh, comprised, what the, the sub was comprised of, uh, we know that it is no longer. If we can bring up 
that graphic now. I don't. I think it's it's on the way, Captain. But what is going to be the most important piece? Uh, here it is. Here, what is going to be the most important piece? As we obviously this is you know a bit of a rudimentary. We don't have the exact uh, layout of of the Titan itself. But is there one? Th part of this that's maybe more important than the others when it comes to learning, when it comes to advancing our knowledge? No, the, the vessel would have experienced what we call plastic deformation. Uh, that might have caused the end bell to come off as a, as a consequence, not as the cause of the implosion. So they're going to have to really recover pre as much of that um, pressure hole as they possibly can in order to determine where the event began, where the initial um, the, the failure uh, occurred, because the rest of it could be, uh, you know, kind of a cascading effects of the, the entire thing collapsing. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.